<laughs> I've used his name throughout the evening, but I had so many names floating around. Dr. Frank Tembori handed me this. This is intriguing. My medical I students have was, to deal with that. I thought this it was... This is the first I've ever seen such a thing. I thought this was thing. Ignatius Rocks. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> you put that on high uh, def. No, no, So no. <laughs> be, before we get into the money, if you don't mind, I'm just incredibly curious. So this one in the middle bottom here, uh, let's put it where people can see. Do I understand right then that this one... Are you holding a bunch of prostates? Yeah. Oh. Let's see. How do I get it? Oh, there we go. Is that the first time you've ever the, done that, This Mark? one in the middle, yes, yes, I would. I will say that is, indeed. That's the normal one. Is that correct? It is, yes. And the one on the left is uh, it just on the other left. My other yeah, left. Yeah, yeah. That's on my right. That one, Your actually. Your left, yeah, my exactly. right. Exactly. I should, I should know that. <laughs> um, so that one actually looks normal. So when I, tell, I teach my students, That's that right. one looks. But if you press down right where your finger is, you'll notice there's a yeah, hard, hard nodule. The is this there something women or wives or girlfriends should be knowing about? To, like Kind of like men are supposed to know about breast cancer lumps? Oh, let me, let me check that out. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, if you actually push down on the bottom yeah. left, you'll notice there's a cancer yeah. hidden there when you press down. Oh. That's what a doctor's trying to do. I, well, actually, incredibly the, interesting. the ladies are probably the most important. Matter of fact, I used to be head, head of the men's health clinic, and oh. trying to get men to come in for prostate exams was like trying to give your cat a bath. So the way we would try and do this is we would put all the advertisements in the women's bathroom, get your guy in here, or no sex. That usually works. And then Great have ad. the guys come. Yeah, ad. absolutely. Yeah, because I, sure. I can tell you, you know, I'm, I'm probably in that age. I'm 51, so I'm probably the age group where I should have it checked. Mm -hmm. But but yeah, it makes me nervous. I've got to admit, it makes me very nervous, and and I'm not excited about. about and, and men men are uh, are like like little babies. I mean, women go through these exams when they're teenagers, pap exams, this sort of thing, gyne exams. And we hate them. Yeah, well, yeah, you do, and, and mammograms. So women are actually pretty tough. Uh, men though, they usually complain, and of course, testicular exams. You should be checking yourself in the shower uh, for testicular nodules. Most men don't even know about that until they hear their friend at the golf course had to remove their testicles. You know, because of a, oh my cancer. God. And then prostate cancer is another one that men usually don't want. And what makes this, and I don't want to take, take away from your, no, your I'm sorry. Oh, show no, here really on important. money. I didn't the, know any but, of this. But what's happening is if we want to talk about politics and medicine, uh, there's what we call in the prostate world, um, what we call the prostate version of SB 1070. Meaning it, it doesn't matter what side of the fence that you're on, no pun intended, people get really riled up about it, right? That's what's happened with the prostate cancer world because the studies have come out that say that the PSA test to screen for this and the DRE, the uh, digital rectal exam, which is the test for prostate cancer, a lot of tests have come out now to show that they don't really screen that well. So what's happening is you have this big, you may have heard about this, sir, a lot of big debates. So now a lot of guys are using that as a further excuse not to be tested. Insurance companies are using that as a further reason not to pay for these tests. And, and, and the deal is what? You just got to grab a rubber glove and, and go and yeah. check? There's the basic test, and that is you take the, the old finger wave, we call it, in okay. the mail. They, uh, you, know, you palpate the prostate, and at the same time, they take a blood test. Uh, and they check for a uh, what's called prostatic specific antigen PSA. So basically, to get a simple blood test screen, and then you could do the ocean, and then to you feel find it. out. I presume your finger's it. going exactly. to find this. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So it's a so it's a two part just a blood exam. test alone is not conclusive. Neither one of them are. Matter of fact, most DREs miss the cancer, and pro and PSA test actually has more positives than negatives. And so, believe it or not, what's happened is this test from 20 years ago they thought was going to prevent prostate cancer. And when they started introducing the test, all these men had high levels. So then that forced all these biopsies. Whoa. This, this is the mm. kicker. So all these biopsies were done, and then they found cancer in a lot of these men. But here's, here's, here's the Twilight Zone part, is that more men were found with cancer than had ever died of it previously. So what that suggested was that most men have it in us all the time, and we never die from it. So that leads a quandary for the doctor. Because if a doctor is told that you legally have prostate cancer, what is he supposed to do? He knows a 90% chance you're going to outlive it, but there's a 10% chance you die. He doesn't want to be sued. So therefore, he tells all 100% of oh, his wow. patients to have surgery. Now, this surgery isn't just take a little skin bite so you have a scar. Prostate surgery means, you know, uh, no erections, incontinence. Ever? All kinds of, yeah, no. Oh, no over the years I've had, I've actually had clients talk to me about this in our meetings. Mm -hmm. I mean, I realize they're financial planning wow. meetings. However, health enters into a lot of things. And so I've heard quite a bit wow. of stories of the post effects of these different prostate surgeries. But in the last few years, 
less and less have been doing the surgery, surgical right. Because the doctors, at least, that, and you tell me this is true, mm. are telling them, well, you have prostate cancer, but you'll die before it ever does anything. They're starting to recognize that, but that's the, that's the whole debate. So therefore, do you test in the first place? Because the test forces the doctor to biopsy. The biopsy, if it's positive, which more often it is, forces the doctor to do the surgery so no one gets sued. So now the whole question is, should you do the test in the first place? Unless you're having tremendous so, pain or something, oh. right? So here, here's the, the here's prostate the cancer but, gives you no pain. That's but here's aren't yeah. some prostate cancers very aggressive? And I had one client over the years that said his prostate cancer was mm -hmm. very aggressive. And it was in that, what, the 10% where it kind of broke through and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it did cause him some, and I don't know that it necessarily took his life because he, he, he died at 91, so who knows. But Well, uh, when I teach, it, I'm a professor of urology at the medical college here. When I teach the students, I often, I am a geek by heart too, so, you know. You know, since we, have, since we have cameras in studio, Mark, are you willing to... Maybe get an exam. On camera. <laughs> well, when I, I was, you know, I had another <laughs> doctor. I had a doctor once that wanted to do acupuncture on me, and I allowed that. But there are places I draw lines. <laughs> if I, I can tell you, I've had two back-to-back -back very intense shows, especially that second one, and and I didn't feel uncomfortable in either of them. <laughs> but <laughs> but this one. But all of a sudden, the pace can, slows down. Yes. The topic is non-threatening. The rubber glove comes and I, out. And you for start whatever sweating. reason, I'm feeling very uncomfortable um, <laughs> about I, this. Then that means the doctor is right. Men so, are very, very uncomfortable right. about going in on this. For women, we've got the pink wristbands on the baseball players on no, Sunday for the breast I have the gloves cancer. and the we, lube we I keep gonna, with we, me. Uh, but we go body. behind Robert there. Wow. What I'm saying. <laughs> um, the if cameras, you go behind there, I'm running home. <laughs> if we just have the cameras on my face so that they can just see me go, whoa, <laughs> um, would be fine, I guess. But, but let's take it now. Um, I'm going to ask some questions. Now, we'll tie this into money somehow later. The motivation part is easy <laughs> to see. <laughs> getting so, it paid for. <laughs> oh, yeah, getting paid for. So we'll get to that in a minute, and the insurances and stuff like that. Well, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Okay, and that's a financial principle. That's a principle. But, but I'm going to well, open myself up to some ig ignorance. Uh, ig ignor so... Uh, I'm, I'm ignorant. Intelligent, they the student. I'm going to go yes. for it. There's some things that, that probably most people know that I don't know. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask some questions that are basic that I don't know the answer to that you're going to say, what the heck? You're an attorney and an intelligent guy? But I've avoided this subject. Where is your prostate and what does it do for you? <laughs> I well, was going to ask the same question, so you're not All ignorant. right, all right. But, but I've just never looked in that because it's, it's an uncomfortable subject for all me. All right. Well, this is not – is this a G-rated show or no? Because, uh, uh, I do not right. think we have many listeners not many, after – Not many. Uh, or many uh, uh, children listeners after our right, last show. All right, so here we go. <laughs> That's correct. Sure. <laughs> so there is no Santa Claus. All right, so basically um, the prostate is the equivalent of the male uh, – sorry, the female breast. Kind of the same thing. They're both a gland. Wow. Uh, they both are completely – ruled over by the sex hormones. I, I think hormones. we better pause right there for just a moment, let that sink in. I think we're going to be really affecting a lot of men's egos out there. <laughs> Let's just pause for a moment of silence. <laughs> No, okay. Now that we've all adapted, because that was kind of a shock to all me, right, too. So it, it ties into the, into the so sexual... How, yeah, well, how does that match? I mean, a woman, it's, it's, I mean most I of us out there, Mark, would you not agree that a woman's breast is much different than these things? It's the same. It's it from the from a. I mean, from well, I haven't seen everybody's ignorant. breast, but I think from a medical point, from yeah, from a physiological point of view. And so let me explain the differences. First of all, they're both re they're both completely related to uh, the sexes. Okay. okay? Um, second is that they both are ruled by sex hormones. Okay. So breast cancer completely, if the estrogen is off, progesterone is off, um, then you get breast cancer and ovarian cancer for that, for that matter. Okay, so by that you're still now, saying that the hormones unique to women. And the hormones right, are right, men. and the same okay. thing. I'm just, I got to get. I, I, I'm I'll, like him. I don't know anything I'll about this. I'll tie them together for you. The okay. prostate, of course, is ruled completely by the sex hormones, by testosterone and estrogen and progesterone. Same thing. Matter of fact, when you get cancer, and both of them are the highest risk of cancer in both sexes. Okay, aside from smoking and lung cancer, I that did sort not of know thing. That. So they're both the same as far as incidence. Um, breast cancer kills more often than prostate cancer. We'll get to a specific reason why, but, but that's, it, makes, it makes a difference. Also, in treatment, it's very unique. When people hear of cancer, they automatically think of chemotherapy and this and that, which is true. Um, breast and prostate, though, have one treatment that no other cancers have, and that is hormone ablation treatment. I was going to ask you about that because mm -hmm. they say that breast cancer is brought on a lot of times by um, too much estrogen. Oh, exactly. Okay, and so, but same not, thing with prostate cancer. Not too much estrogen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Matter of fact, when men. Well, okay, wait. The backup. Why, so, what hormone brings on too much? Brings on the prostate cancer. 
just about to answer that. So estrogen for, for, for women. Mm -hmm. um, with men, it tends to be a disparity between too much estrogen and too low testosterone. So the ads that I hear that come on, they're on the radios all the time, mm -hmm. you know, about the libido for the men and they want to do, you know, testosterone treatments. Is that going to um, <laughs> have a man... More prone to cancer? Oh, or? you are quick. I, I don't know. You're, we don't, just met just a little while ago. It's fantastic where you wow. understand this because that's where my business. I have a. You, we didn't really do an intro, but I have a. My, most no, of my I have no. I didn't even know your name. I just walked <laughs> into okay. the war zone All right, and thought, dang, I should have been here listeners. sooner. <laughs> So I was sorry. so disappointed. Just I would address listeners, nicer if ladies, I was my I'm walking into a room full of men in this uh -huh. man cave, and there must have been, it felt <laughs> like 20 men. I realized that they were just projecting their testosterone. It was pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. However, yes. as a result, that's why I didn't catch your name or your practice. So Dr. that's Frank great. Tumble. It's okay. And, and I, I must also tell our listeners that the guest who was scheduled to come for Nancy's show, Money Motivation, was unable to come, and Dr. Tembori was kind enough to stay over so that it wouldn't be just us looking at each other saying, what do we talk about? And, oh. and I'm very intrigued. So, Oh, this is an important well, if topic. I, if I, I don't know Maybe if about. I just give a quick background who I am, because we met in a different different way. Yes. Um, um, again, I focus, I have a, a practice called Prostate Second Opinions it's in, in Phoenix. The majority of my patients fly from around the world, actually, for my practice. It's a cash-only practice. They come from physicians, MD, surgeons. No Medicare. Natural doctors. Nope. No nothing. Medicare. I don't take it. It's nothing. It's just, hence some of the libertarian issues of having a cash only and getting away from from uh, organized medicine. So that's another story. But I did that on purpose because I knew what was going to happen later. So nevertheless, I uh, I see only men and they usually bring their wives in. Um, what I have is a practice that's kind of a, an integrative practice where I help patients determine do they need surgery or not. Kind of like we talked before about myself being more bilingual. I understand, you know, the conservative side, the libertarian side, and such, and I can not try and broker for them. Show. I'm not bringing not it up. a political I'm show. I'm using today. that as an example of how in medicine, peace, peace. I understand the <laughs> I understand the surgical realm. I used to work with Mayo surgeons. I used to do organ transplant, harvest, and surgeries. I'd, they'd fly me up the East Coast. that would take hearts and eyes and such. My previous life. Okay. I also well, eventually we want to talk about that too, but not if sure. we get and get to. I'm but just, this is we'll stick with this for now. Yeah. That's a subject that is very, of great interest. So it's just, it was an area, and then I worked at Merck Pharmaceuticals for some time. So the point is I have a very conventional background. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I eventually became a naturopathic medical doctor in the, in, the, in the state of Arizona. I lived at a Buddhist monastery in Japan. I went to college in Japan. I grad my good diplomas in Japanese from, from home. Um, so I, I have in both worlds, and I, so therefore knowing both, these patients come in with this problem of someone felt their prostate and... You know, they felt something, and they want to do a biopsy. So they did this, a self-exam. Like, exactly. We're told to do well. No, 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 their doctor, the regular doctor, doctor did, did a DRE, or they got a PSA. So what happens is they just so go they, through. Can life. men do their own exam? Like no. Women? Okay, no, they can't. No, okay, no. men, don't worry about that. So one. See, <laughs> that'd be hard. Some guys don't might you be able to. Relieved, I don't Mark. Know. <laughs> but what? So what happens is, in, in a nutshell, of what I do for a living, and this will play in, um, is that the guys are usually they go through this game called prostate ping pong. So the conventional doctor says, "Oh, this." PSA test is up. I don't want to be sued, so I will send you to get a biopsy. But then the alternative doctors, they say, oh, don't get a biopsy. You know, don't listen to those evil doctors. Uh, the PSA you can't listen to. It's irrelevant, which is kind of true. So now these people get caught in the middle. Or they are diagnosed with cancer on a biopsy. They have the same problem. The surgeon says, oh, what are you doing next Tuesday? Let's take it out. A radical prostatectomy. And then the alternative guys say, oh, no, no, don't ever get it out. You'll die of something else. Here's all my herbs. Let me put you on the plan, you know, and sell a bunch of supplements. Well, again, people do die of this disease. So which one are you? And, you know, you're dealing with men's erections and things. And so men want to make a decision. And you can't do it in a five-minute visit with an MD that is too worried about his attorney. And you can't often get all the information from an alternative doctor who means well, but maybe doesn't recognize enough when it's a more serious case. They don't understand both sides. So I'm trained in both. And uh, this biofactor machine I just brought in here, um, it's a $70,000 ultrasound Doppler machine that I don't want to left in the car in the Arizona sun here. So I brought it in. And so people fly to my office in order to have this machine done with my assessment. We spend three hours, three hours, and they pay cash for this machine. I do it. The color Doppler, about only four doctors in the world use that type of machine for that. And then I sit back and I explain to them with all of their biopsy results, everything, their history, their sexual history history, their profession, chemical exposures, uh, a genetic test that we do. And I put it all together into an aggregate approach. 
and then figure out basically what side of the fence are you on do you really need surgery is this like the wolf there really is a wolf at the door or can you probably outlive this like we mentioned earlier and you can use herbs and supplements and but more more often though the question is how do we track you how do we know your problem's not getting worse especially if you don't trust the psa in the first place now how do you know it's getting better what if the psa goes down well you just say you don't trust the psa so i have to find sophisticated ways to track you as a person and when i say person one last point i'll shove this little diatribe it's also the person here in their heart it's the couple i always like to make sure the wife is there too you know i'll give you an example um, let's say there's a patient that they two patients they're clones almost they have a cancer that i'm kind of on the fence about i sort of think maybe surgery or not I have to feel what is their consent level, what's their, tr their, their risk level that they want to take, and also who they are. Give you two, two stereotypes, and I don't mean this is not in a negative sense, but I'll, of course here we have a lot of, uh, of LDS Mormon uh, families. I'd be and a lot of, of them. Excellent. And so I use this stereotype myself that they tend to be very family oriented. And so, you know, they might come to me and I'll say, they say, look, Dr. Tambori, I understand the risks if I have the surgery, you know, uh, the certain health risks and lifestyle risks, I mean, uh, quality of life risks. But you know, I want to see my granddaughter get married. I want to see my family get married. That, that's a priority to me. That says one thing. At the same time, I'll have men from Sun City, widowed with like nine girlfriends, they're having the time of their life, and they say, hey, doc, you know, if it doesn't work, kill me, <laughs> you know? <laughs> my father's like one of those. And so you get people on both sides, and so that actually enters into the equation of how do you help a man, what is their priority? A surgeon's not going to ask that, they just don't want to be sued. So this is the level that I bring to the table, and I'm able to do this, again, cash without getting any of us involved. So that's Ult what I do for Ultimately, do you perform the surgery? No, no. And my, but I've worked with all the surgeons. I had a, my own radio program, a Men's Health Talk, I was telling him earlier, where I would interview all the top. So I was in Top Doc magazine myself, and I know a lot of the top docs in the area and, and in other states. So when my guys are flying in, I have to have them to talk. If they want surgery, what kind of surgery? Because think about it. When you want to buy a Toyota, don't go to the Ford lot. Right? Because they're going to always tell you, you know, buy a Toyota. Mm -hmm. Same thing. If a doctor is paying off a multi-million dollar machine, it's because, A, he has to pay that thing off, and, two, hopefully he believes in it. Each doctor tells you what they think based off of what they do. I don't do the surgeries. I used to in the old days, but I don't now. And so I know what they all do, and I know the pros and cons. I'm not trying to sell anybody on it. So after I know your prostate better than you do <laughs> at that point, and I know you and your wife very well at this point, now I can help determine what surgeries might be good for you, uh, what types, what classifications, and then I help them guide in that direction. That's why when you go shopping for a computer, you don't go to somewhere that they're getting commission. Exactly, exactly. And patients tend to, I tend to see very, uh, you yeah, know, fairly educated patients, those who've been through the mill. And after you've been bounced around enough times, when they see me at that level, then we, you know, the buck stops here and we figure everything out. Can't they do something like monitor it? So if you come in and mm -hmm. someone has, are you able, well, first of all, are you able to tell the type of cancer and whether it's a passive or aggressive cancer, if it is cancer? Well, the, in a way you can to a certain degree, which is exactly what I do. The problem is there is not one test to do that. And the system keeps trying to sh put everything on one test. You know, one PSA test, get a biopsy, but not one test tells you everything. The PSA test is, is actually a perfect example of the problem. Um, if you, you know, because the PSA, if it's high, uh, well, what does it mean? I mean, yes, it means it could be cancer. It could also mean you had a bunch of sex last night. It could be that you just came off an airplane. The altitude change makes the prostate swell. You could, you could have ridden a Harley Davidson motorcycle. That sh shakes it up. I had one guy rode cross country uh, on a field trip playing Easy Rider. He had a midlife crisis. He made it to Chicago until his prostate seized up and he couldn't pee. And they shoved the catheter up there and then took a PSA test. His PSA was 15. Did the, I mention that I was uncomfortable? Did anybody hear that? <laughs> <laughs> the, normal was, the normal was four. He had 15. They said, oh, my God, you need a surgery. Oh. And it uh, turns out, I said, wait a minute, hold the corn here. What was your uh, PSA before the trip? He said, oh, well, actually, my wife made me get it you know, for my insurance policy. <laughs> and it turns out it was 1.2. So 1.2 to 14, that's not cancer. That's a Harley Davidson. And I said, did the doctor ever ask you that? He said, no, he had five minutes. Most people do not know this. I am sure that 99.9% .9 of listeners had no idea that something like the equivalent of a hormone test can be affected by what you just did. Something as simple as an airplane ride would cause that type of a diagnosis that would scare mm -hmm. somebody half to death. 
and maybe cause a, a needless life-altering experience. That's what happens. The system That's doesn't really have time. That's really frightening. Yeah. Really frightening. So I didn't answer a question, though, about what does the prostate do <laughs> after all of this. But did you have any qu- I'm sorry about that whole rambling about my background, but at least you have an understanding of where No, these examples from. are really, really important because mm-hmm. one of the biggest things that people do fear is these misdiagnoses. I mean, just to give an example, I have a, a sister that years ago um, mm-hmm. had her entire large intestines out because her Crohn's disease got so bad and found out later that wasn't necessary. It was just a matter. She had a bunch of food allergies, and she could have corrected it that way. So... You just never know. So I think, I'm sure, and I'm hopeful that there's somebody out there that had a test done right after doing one of the activities or something similar to what you just said, mm-hmm. who may second, you know, do a second guess and say, hey, let me rethink this. Maybe it's not cancer after all. Right. What well, is, what is that? Is that your fancy machine right there? Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, hey. it's portable, actually, for as small as it is. It uh, plays uh, Donkey Kong, too, when it gets okay, loaded is up. It, look on the, I, don't I, think can, do, I can do a little camera work. Okay, he's going to move some cameras. Yeah, it's gonna, it'll take it. a minute or two to load up, so okay. you, know, you can wait. But uh, I'll just, and again, I, I travel. I, I see patients at other doctor's offices, so I'm like the traveling doc, and the uh, uh, that's small enough now. I can bring it, and of course the TSA hates me, and they see my rectal probe when I'm walking through dressed like this. <laughs> it's scarier than a gun. They have those yeah. guys. I'm but. going to ask you too. You know, often men are <laughs> Especially diagnosed. Especially the men, they hate that. <laughs> often men are diet. Listen, did I? Speaking of the airplanes, did I tell you my last trip? This is a TSA alert. We're going to take a moment here. TSA alert. I had cut up hikama in my bag in a. Did I cut up what? Hikama. It's a vegetable. Oh, 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 Instead oh. of taking carrots. And so they take my bag and they do a check. I get a body check. I have no idea why. And so then they take my bag and open it and they pull out my bag of hikama. And she, I, she said, what is this? It's hikama. Well, that's what I thought. Puts it in the little plastic bowl and runs it through the screener all by itself. Be aware of taking hikama. Very, very dangerous. Might even write with your machine. Um, and also, yes. the other thing is do not, do not bring gerbils when you're going to see your proctologist. <laughs> yes, I think that's a great words of advice. <laughs> Wait, let's get back to the question I, of what and, does that thing do? Yeah, well, okay. people, oh, 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 and, and address the i got a the guy whole, here who's really wanting to know what my prostate does. <laughs> yeah, what does a prostate do? And then address that, right. too, along with the whole people saying, well, I have an enlarged prostate, and yeah, BPH. I don't know what you say to that. <laughs> yeah, Bob Dole is one of those. Oh, wow. no, no politics, okay. no politics. I'm just saying Thank you very famous. much. He's no famous. politics. We did enough politics for the rest of the day, I think. <laughs> I'm trying to shift gears We're here. We're going to have our own revolutionary war Doctor, in this little room. This right. reminds me maybe what our founding fathers did, sitting in the pub, you know, and getting into these fights. <laughs> okay. So basically, um, basically... The prostate, like I said, it's the equivalent as far as a, a, a developmental, like the breast in a sense. Uh, also, they both secrete fluid. Okay, So the breast, we know what that does, obviously. Milk, well, there's right? Milk, You're talking about milk. But the okay. prostate does the same thing. It secretes prostatic fluid. Hence, since these are glands that are involved with sex, and they uh, produce these, these, these fluids, and they do it under sexual influence, meaning as far as the hormones, which are sex hormones are very volatile. And so when you have these swings of estrogen, testosterone, these are like angry, you know, pr- kind of primitive hormones that really drive, obviously, the sexes, right? Um, you tend to get these cancers because cancers tend to occur when you have high metabolism in cells and they kind of start tripping over themselves. And so whenever you have cells that are irritated or they trip over, like smoke, you know, so it just irritates and irritates. Eventually, cells begin to trip over themselves. Uh, that's called flipping an oncogene in medical talk. But anyway, that's kind of what they do. Flipping a what? An oncogene. It's How like, do you spell that? Uh, o- <laughs> O-N-C-O. Anyway, it's kind of, it's kind of like, just it's like, like it sounds. It's like okay. the wily e. coyote and the okay. anvil falls on his head and then the oh. stars go and they get amnesia. It's kind of what happens with, with a cell. Something just bops it and it forgets what its job is. The stars go around and then it turns into a cancer cell. All it knows how to do is run around, eat, and go to the bathroom and devour other cells. So that's what happens. Mm. So prostate cancer and, 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 and uh, 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 breast cancer are very similar. And what I was mentioning earlier is that both of them can be treated, unlike other cancers, with the hormone treatments, where you can give hormone treatments for women the breast cancer and for men. It's, it's extremely powerful. And that's the only cancer where, you know, if the cancer gets out, you take away their hormones, which is not necessarily good for guys, but you can freeze the cancer in its tracks. And it's extremely powerful to try and stop that cancer. So anyway, so that's kind of the setup. What does it actually do? What's the, what does it secrete? Well, the prostate is the connection 
from the urethra, so the penis and the urethra, and then it connects to the bladder. So the prostate's kind of like this big you know, gland that just combines the two. Uh, therefore, the prostate's part of the sphincter to open and close the bladder. So that's why if the prostate gets too big or too tight, it closes off the bladder, then men have urinary retention. And hence they have, that's what they call it, benign prostatic hyperplasia. But that's another story. But that's what the prostate does. It's involved, the prostatic urethra, the urethra that goes through the prostate, is, you know, it's part of the tunnel, part of the journey. So anything that gets in its way can affect urination. Now, on the prostate, though, you might say, well, okay, I got that. It's a tunnel. But what else does it really do? Well, it's the connection point from the testes. The testicles have these seminal vesicles. And by the way, I keep seeing myself on the high def. And if I knew I was being in doctor mode, I wouldn't be looking like this. <laughs> <laughs> I was in my, like, we you say, know. This is radio worth watching. I know. Definitely. This is, you know, trust me, my doctors see my ponytail after my reputation. They can't believe I'm their doctor until I for a few minutes. That's all good. But uh, so I didn't know I was on TV. So anyway, the seminal vest, I'm sorry, the, uh, the, you have on top of the testicles these glands, and the glands make this sperm. And the sperm go up the vas deferens, which are the connection point of the testes, goes up in your inguinal canal, and then goes into your prostate. There's two connections points on the prostate. And that's where the sperm gets injected into the urethra, hence for an orgasm. Now, of course, it's not done yet, because the sperm, if the sperm just was shot out by itself into the vagina, well, we have a problem. You see, women, maybe at a subconscious or physiological level, don't like men. And so they have a, a, a very, the vagina is extremely acidic. And it's done that on purpose in order to keep up bacteria and everything else. So it's, it's extremely hostile. If you put sperm in there, they'll die instantly, just like any cell, any kind of uh, fungus or whatever. Um, so in order to, to countermeasures, the prostate creates what's called seminal fluid, which is extremely alkaline. So it, that's the white fluid of semen. So the semen is alkaline. The sperm gets mixed into the kind of protective uh, fluid, and then that's, is what, that's what gets shot out. And therefore, the sperm can survive and neutralize the acid just long enough until the sperm makes it up into the cervix. That's, that is intriguing. That is very intriguing. I want to ask you now, some, I've had um, people, you know, the Sun City type of people, or, you know, like if you're describing your dad, who say, it's for my health. And so is it true or is it just a choice if a man that a man will have a better chance at keeping his prostate healthy if he stays sexually active at how whatever you recommend times a week? <laughs> I'm glad you asked that instead of me. Didn't you oh, say, I get this question. Didn't you say 55 times a week? Yeah. I have, honestly, I am a certified financial planner. But for some reason, as I, you remember, I say over and over and over that people are more concerned about their money than they are about their body. She gets asked that a lot. I get talked to a lot about this topic over the years. A lot. That's why I'm so curious. Because it's like they, if oh, they can trust the me answer. with that, they'll trust me with, uh, with their money, maybe. I don't know. I, you know, it's so funny. Before the show, I almost asked you that. You almost asked me why. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's only a <laughs> Did I mention I was uncomfortable? Okay, I'm ready for the answer. Okay. It's biology. I just the want you to know, is. I never thought Mark Windsor would sit on a show where the words <laughs> orgasm, vagina was used twice, <laughs> sperm, some Are you keeping and a record? <laughs> I actually am because I'm... This is, this is, this is great. This, this is, is great. a monumental night here. Yeah. Well, and Mark if his wife to... is watching, Mark will never be allowed on this side of town again. <laughs> and if my son's <laughs> watching, he'll explain it when I get home. <laughs> Well, you know, health affects even Mark. Everybody has to be healthy. The question that's on the table that I would have been too embarrassed to ask is whether a an active sexual lifestyle right. reduces the risk All of right. prostate cancer. Let me give you the answer. Let me give you the answer. Well, let me preface that by saying because you said <laughs> that if the person who rode the Harley went in, you know, and had that happen, that he got a bad test, you also in your stating of all these different symptoms. Mm. Well, what if someone had come in and they had just been extremely active? So mm. that raised the question. And is what about vibration treatment? Is that right, something? Wait, 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 guys. Second, back off, back off. Back I'm off still on one, one question. One my, question, They're which worse is? than my political guests. I can't stick on one question. <laughs> Doctor. Well, you've got the two most, most volatile Doctor. issues going. Answer the question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll give you your own script after the show if <laughs> you'd you, like. Dr. But Dr. in Temple. general. And talking about orgasm. No, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. All right, in, gen in general, <laughs> well, this is, my, my medical shows aren't usually this fun, so that's good. So, so the answer is there isn't a set answer. There's some guidelines, and here's the deal. Um, 
in, in general, from just a, from my perspective of what I see, is that if you have too much sex, that can actually create what's called prostatitis. You inflame it too much, use it too much. So if you, use, if you have a whole lot at once, or if you don't use it at all, people who are just purposely at, uh, uh, abstain from sex, or orgasm, I should say, um, they can create problems because there's this issue of stagnation. You know, even natural doctors also talk about that. If you get constipated, you don't flow, you get backup. Uh, if your emotions, you hold them in, you get backup. Even spirituality, from a mind-body-spirit point of view, if you don't, uh, this is a whole loaded, loaded area we want to go into now, but I have, I have a speech and a lecture I give to doctors talking about, we discuss mind, body, and spirit, uh, are, we con are we spiritually constipated in, the, in this country, being that it's the one area of mind, body, spirit that we're not allowed to talk about, and so as a culture, it doesn't get expressed, and what does that happen? That's a whole other area about the levels of stagnation that you can have. But in any case, um, as far as with the prostate, if it, you don't use it enough or too much, either way. So therefore, the answer often is, being consistent, uh, be consistent. And One of the questions. Much? Wait, 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 wait. Well, I'll ask the patients when they're there, couples. I ask them right there, and, you know, when they're in front of me. I ask them, "Do you have a lot of sex? Not a lot of sex? Or more importantly, is it irregular? Meaning, like a salesman, they go away for a while, then they come back and they have a lot of sex because that actually creates a problem too when it's up and down like that. So it's kind of finding a consistency and frequency that you are using it. So, and so that's the answer that I normally give. Now when I'm speaking to doctors and other naturopaths or MDs, it gets a little more uh, colorful because um, in natural medicine especially, they agree with Chinese medicine, the acupuncture on it, pretty much parallel. But there's one area where they completely fall off the rails and that is <laughs> having orgasms. Because in the natural model, the whole idea is that you need to, it's the emunctory, you have to use it, right? Uh, the more you use it, in a sense, you increase the flow and it strengthens the vitality of that organ. However, the Chinese and Ayurvedic models have the opposite approach. They believe that every time you have an orgasm, you actually lose a few minutes of your life. <laughs> like literally, that you actually lose You're some You're going to die, Mark. <laughs> And that's why I say some, they, some, some people should be dead already. Where, right? where do they, what's the basis for that? I mean, it's an interesting concept. And it would never fly in this country. But what's the, <laughs> yes. what's the, I mean, just think of all the, all the advertising. Well, the reason, the reason they say this, and from an Ayurvedic model, is that we have a certain essence that we're born with called Jing. And I'm switching to my Japanese-Asian background here. But the, the Jing is a separate energy that's within us that you're born with, the, that, what they believe. And so, therefore... Uh, it's like it's kind of like a you know it's like the candle that burns twice as bright you know lasts half as long. That's kind of how they look at Jing, and so that vitality begins to go if you use it too much. Um, and so it just it just gets depleted over time. Is I've what got they a, I've got a good question, and this this goes yeah. back to Mark's question of what is using it too much. But if it's used too much, can you treat it like the common uh, you know drop a couple of ice cubes or? Maybe a special well, heating pad. Well the, well, the kicker. Well, the kicker actually is if you use it too much and you get pro, you get prostatitis. That's a pain in the. Well, you know what? Basically, prostatitis gives you the symptoms. These guys, they feel like they're sitting on a ping pong ball. It gets inflamed. Mm. They go to the bathroom all the time. They can have painful urination. And once you get prostatitis, it rarely ever goes away. You can get rid of it ninety five percent, but the pilot light is always on once men get it, and that's really just wow. That sucks. Yeah. And it makes the PSA go up, which always fools the doctor who always wants to do a biopsy. Now I'm going to. Ask ask a question that's wow. very practical and it's going to embarrass you. It, it would not be your first I'm question. Pretty sure, I'm pretty sure it won't embarrass me, though. Okay. Now, we have to remember, okay, that Let's, this that's is... up if you want to take pictures. Yeah, get, this it, is over, a, uh, get it over here and he'll focus cameras on it. Now, yeah, Doctor, right this is a very you. practical question and I know there are Can many... I just drop him right now and we'll do an exam? <laughs> Joe, will you focus on getting a camera on this? Oh, computer? all right, I'll do it. I can explain all this with you. You don't want my question. I can yes. see that. No, I want it. I want it. But, <laughs> okay. but we've got equipment flying all over the place. All right, and I let's wanna, not let the equipment I want our fly. listeners to see in a second. Okay, let him focus on cameras for a minute. That's fine. And Go let's ahead. have you guys focus on the question. All right, you get the cameras going. All right, now, doctor, hmm. this is a very sincere question. I do don't want you to think it's flippant. Oh, I've heard everything in this oh, Okay, field. now, as you know, in Arizona, we have a quite a large over 50 population. Mm -hmm. We also have quite a large over 50 single population. So if we are in a social setting and maybe we could have single people at a, you know, sitting, having drinks, or maybe they're at a dance and a woman is approached and part of the man's line is, I really need to be with you because you will help my health. 
think of it as um, as um, as medical. Now, if that's part of the man's line, what does the woman answer? Does she take the Japanese approach, or does she take the doctor's approach? <laughs> that fun. depends if you're LDS or not. <laughs> yes, if you're right? LDS, you definitely. <laughs> well, people of faith will will not need this question. I'm talking about just regular people out there that are getting. That, this is, I have, I can tell you for a fact that I have heard stories that this is part of some of men's conversations with women. Those men uh, are genuinely men. concerned, you know. That well, they need, that's what so they say. They need to have sex for their own health is what you're saying. Yes. And, and, they, and well, they Well, really to me, that's called a line because all they need to do is go at home with a, you know, whatever and do it themselves. It's in the orgasm. It's not about how you have it. It's the orgasm itself. Now, granted, being with a partner, there's the whole spiritual, emotional component, assuming right. there is that in, involved. But if they're using the health but, part of it. Uh, so what you're saying yeah. is the woman cannot use your, your jing-jang, whatever that was that I'm not familiar I with. Was, you're going to lose up your life force. Ying ying is what I was told. <laughs> well, I thought it was jing. What is it? The jing, li- jing. Jing, See, yes. I told you. It was Although, jing. you know, it's kind of a good line. I should use it jing. myself sometimes. Listen, she, words, she could know. say to <laughs> him. God, God. I'm going to try that tonight. I am not going to mess up your <laughs> jing. All right. And call Sorry. you to die young by using your life force up. She could use look that one up and use that one. Yeah, you could turn it around on you them. Could turn so it around. If you okay. want to die tomorrow? Just you know? wanted to help <laughs> some of the women out there. Oh wow. boy, <laughs> <laughs> this is your show. Yes, yes. I'm just here for the ride. It's her know? show. Otherwise, I would take it a different direction for sure. All right, Mark, take it a different direction. <laughs> Let's use a moment while I regroup. Um, Mentally here, emotionally. Let's get the cameras. Oh, it is kind of on this machine, Doctor. Right. I can show you what that uh, is. If yes, you talk camera. to us as he gets the camera on yeah, there a little bit better. Can we move this in any way? Or can you... Well, there we go. How about that? Yeah, move it a little bit to one side, and there's a delay of about five seconds, Doctor. Yeah. So it'll take you just a minute. To, there, the opposite direction. Take it the opposite Oops. direction. There you go. Okay. Talk to us about what this is. So there you go, perfect. Yeah, I don't know if you, can, if you guys can't zoom in there, but what you'll see there is a shape. As a matter of fact, uh, if, Mark, if you show the the prostate, if you notice that shape, the one on the bottom, the normal one that you correctly picked out, that yeah. one. You see, it's kind of like a heart, a pear, a heart uh, almond type shape. If you, if you move your finger away from it, you can see that just a little point at the bottom. It's kind of uh, you see the shape, kind of like a heart. Well, that's exactly what you're seeing right here. So on the picture, if you can make it out, you're seeing with the outline seeing here and then it goes here's the point Mm -hmm. like this so that's actually the prostate of what it looks like in real time and uh what you're seeing the image is that dark spot a bad thing uh actually no no that's what we're looking for hopefully not finding a black spot is what's called a hypochoic lesion and those are areas that tend to be cancer they can be cancer the black spot there is actually the pro is the prostatic urethra it's the black line right down the middle. That's the tube where the urine goes through. And at the bottom, there's a black area, I believe. Um, so if a yeah, person just looked at the that, they bottom, could get nervous the if they bottom, didn't know. All, all this black area, that's mm-hmm. his bladder. Oh, okay. That's his bladder. So it's upside down. So the bladder uh, is black because sound waves, it's, it's sonar. It goes through. So the further it goes, it, and they don't bounce back, then it comes out black. Okay. So therefore, the prosthetic urethra is less dense because it's a tube, hence it comes out black. You see my point? So that's how yes. you're able to point that out. And as you move the probe, you, I can see this in 3D, and I, I can switch it to 3D, and you can see it and move if you want. I just don't know if the camera's going to catch it. Now, is the, is, we talked about how various tests in and of themselves are not as accurate. Mm-hmm. Is, is this test, however, one that is... Oh, yeah. Is much much is more. Oh, there. that is can, cool. So that's the actual prostate. When I move it, and I'm able to see, uh, you know, different changes in time. And by the way, this machine, for the record, I'm not trying to sing out sound like a commercial here, but this machine is not meant for the prostate. It's actually meant for cardiovascular, high high resolution cardiovascular work. It even has color Doppler, which I use as well. One of the other pictures where I can see every time your heart beats, I can see the blood flow pours through and the more blood flow i see in the prostate the sicker the gland is it's showing well actually is it oh, yeah. oh yeah. look at that oh, yeah. so amazing so that's actually so the different gradations are what you're looking for this high resolution the problem is the urologists don't use a machine like this they use this is like a ferrari or a or countach i'm a countach guy um it's like a countach what they use is like a yugo and, and, and I'm not blaming... I owned a Hugo once. I'm one of the few Americans. <laughs> I'm not blaming urologists. I don't want anyone to think the urologist is bad. It's just that they don't need this because they're not doing a qualitative analysis. They use just a real 
kind of a jalopy Are they version. even the ones doing it, or do they have the Yugo uh, no, they, they associates have, they, they have in Yugo there? One. They have, matter of fact, the, what's so funny is their machines are so basic. They're big. They don't need to pay for a real fancy, small, petite one. So therefore, patients sometimes come in, they see this tiny one, like a Trash 80, and they think that the other doctor had a good one because it was big, but you know, it's like an old you know, cell phone. You know? Yeah, it's like a com- computer at my desk versus this little thing. Exactly. Aren't they, just text, aren't they just techs who do this and the doctor reads it? Yes. Okay. What normally ha- wait, wait, wait. But what normally happens is the, the, uh, there's two ways that, that a general ultrasound is done. One is by the urologist, but he just uses the, the old one to show where to put the needle to take the biopsy. He's not really looking at the tone of it. He just wants to know where to put it. Okay? And then the other type... Where do you put the needle? Through the rectum into the prostate. Ow. Oh. Did I mention I'm uncomfortable? Yes. You've mentioned... Uh, show, okay, show me, show me the, the needle. I just don't like needles. Uh, show me what's going in. Do you have that here somewhere? What's going in? You happen the, to have a needle, needle with you? No, I just have the probe, not a needle. I don't use the needle for a biopsy. We don't do biopsies. Not like that? It's, well, I have it right here, but it's like... You know, the probe. It really is that big? Well, it doesn't go that far in. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not, we're not talking <clears throat> ET here. It's how, just how, the, <laughs> show me, show me the probe that goes in. You really want to see the probe? Yes. Right. By the way, we had a time of hearing the music. I it's not. No, it, no, just fine. Oh, and okay. it's not ribbed or anything else. It's just a. Uh, <laughs> you know, I only brought this home because I have patients <laughs> at another office tomorrow, and I had this in the car. I, I think it's good for people to see that. Don't you think it's a good idea to see? I'm machine? very curious. Uh, yeah. if Mark, you might want to turn your head here for a minute. KQCK uh, radio station has impromptu proctologist. Uh, <laughs> if I not pass a proctologist. Out, if I pass what is your out? official so this name? Is the probe. Oh, that is a good question too. What is your official name? Is that a Frank used? Tambor. Is that a used probe? Dr. Frank Tambori. Okay, do you have a, I mean, like, we don't call you a proctologist. So oh, no, it, 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 essentially, most people call me a urologist. This is, a, this is unbelievable. Urologist. I want to see this. Okay. Uh, you I really want to put this on camera. We need this on, like no, this we really want this, this, this on camera. So put it trouble. in front of this here, because okay. that's what's really Yeah, so this focus. is the probe right there. So uh-huh. put it right in front of the computer there. Yeah. You're seeing that probe right there, guys, and uh, it, it actually looks just like a, you know, a normal whatever. Yeah, it looks like a normal actually, whatever. It's, it's it kind of looks like an enema tube. It's an intravaginal probe. So actually, you use this for looking at vaginas and things. And you can also put it under the heart. I can actually see your heart beat every valve open and close. So uh, believe it or not, this makes a great party toy amongst doctors. We have a few beers, and then we sit there and probe each other. And Break check out the lube. Out. Oh. <laughs> nice. It, it is. It is. That's what doctors do. I mean, it's fun to actually look inside other. You know, you just just over here and here. You, and you are a nerd. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, really you find some Does interesting that sound things. Exciting? You should the next um, big party we have. Should we blurt this but, out? But you can't. You can't do this from the outside looking in, right? You can't. Just okay. well, this when I talked about the heart, there's parts of the body you can use this probe and this machine to see the heart under the rib cage, for instance, through the How, skin. Yeah, through okay. the skin. If you push under, but to do this, it has to be rectal. Ouch! So that's why I mean, it we just use looks this. like it would hurt. But so you anyway, could like, still do the heart exam rectally, <laughs> right? Uh, turn up the game. Yeah. Well, no, you really can't do that. So, so this is. Um, this unfortunately, just in case people don't get the wrong idea, I mean, I know, I know, uh, you don't really know who I was coming in, but you know, it is the reason people fly around the world for this is because there's only about four doctors that use this high-end machine for the prostate. Do you knock them out for that? No, 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 no. You no. just bend them over, literally. No, they, they lie. They, they lie down. That on doesn't the side hurt, Mark. Come and, on. Uh, oh, they lie. Guys. I had a couple guys fall asleep snoring actually, so. It's not that bad. It's not that painful then. No, doing this, no. Now, a biopsy is a little different because they're using a larger wand. You'd have to pull larger than that. that? Oh, yeah, yeah. We have to understand. First of all, this is, just the, this is just the probe to see it. If you take a biopsy, you need another probe with it. Like I said, they use their, their probe, which is a – their machine is, is you know, like a, the Yugo version. They just want to know where the heck to stick the needle. And they just move the probe around, and then they see the coordinates, and they take the needle, oh. which is another probe. Now that and, hurts. And they're like doing this, and they hit the button, and you hear this pop. And then yeah. goes through right. and it takes a cool. I don't want the needle. No, no. Did we lose all of our listeners at this point? Well, you <laughs> lost probably, probably not. Actually, this <laughs> is interesting. I hope not. So yeah, that's how they uh, take it. I, I actually am more comfortable now knowing that that's only that. Do does this eliminate the need for a biopsy if the good person question. goes through this? That is the loaded question. That is and a that great is question. Why people? Thank you. Uh, I didn't hear that. What and was that the question? Do you, does and that this did not embarrass you, right? It, it injuvenated me depending on his answer. Um, <laughs> does this machine eliminate the need for the biopsy? Right. And, I, and I, I, to answer it, again, I'm going to sound like a bad commercial. Um, you're not 
this is not authorized by the FDA. You know how much I love government agencies. No politics. Um, so, therefore, they do not allow this to be used in hospital. Well, you can use it. It's just they, they use it all the time, cardiology and what have you. But the application for urologists, they could use it, but insurance won't cover it. And if wow. the insurance won't cover it, they won't do it. So, therefore, that's why I'm off the grid and I keep it that way. Patients will then pay cash to have this done. The reason they don't pay for it, patients always say, well, it's so great. You know, why won't they do it? Why do they keep forcing me to do a biopsy? And as an attorney, you'll appreciate this. It's because the only legal diagnosis is a biopsy. So if you can't have that cell to show the judge and say, this is why I took his prostate out and he has no erections, don't sue me, here it is. I could have all the pictures. This could be glowing purple for neon cancer. I could have every test saying, 10 ways to Sunday, you have cancer. I cannot legally diagnose you as such. Therefore, from a standard medical perspective, all this is moot. It's fancy pictures. It's great. But we need the biopsy. So therefore, why, you know, all they need is one little test to suggest cancer. Let's try the biopsy. So were you just a super high-end guy, one of four in the world, that does this? Yeah. So people have 30 grand, they come and look you up and... Well, That's pretty much, to pretty much what it is. It's, it's, a, it's a high-end consultation of wow. when people come in, which is kind of it's funny just having this discussion on the fly. Yeah, right, right. Uh, I usually teach other physicians. I, I you know, lectures at San Fran and things to teach them these questions about how to have a, a more of advanced way to assess prostate cancer without you know, chasing your, or scaring your patients right to an unneeded biopsy. That was my next question. Yeah. It, so we go the other way. So if they come here and they have all this wow. purple, then you can say to them, okay, the biopsy is not unnecessary. Right. But if we go the other way and they had the pi- high PSA for one of these lifestyle mm-hmm. activities, they can come see you and then there's not a lot of purple cancer warnings. And then right. you can say you're probably okay. True, false, so that, so that they have a little bit more guidance. Is Just to help you make an educated decision based on your lifestyle, exactly, right? Exactly, exactly. So they can tell, and also their own risk assessment. I mean, I have some men that, you know, if they find one little cell of cancer, they get so freaked out, they're like, I'm going to rip it out. Oh my gosh, they get so anxious. And their wife's the one bringing them in because she still wants his erections, right? That's just the reality. Some of the women bring them in, but the guys just can't wait to get it out. Other men are the, the opposite. They come in with a diagnosis, the whole prostate's full of cancer, the whole thing. And they just laugh and go, ah, you know, I, God's going to save me or, or my, my natural healing will. And I'm not, I'm not adjusting that or in I'm any going way. To the, or I'm going I, to the bar. Yeah, but it just they have their own view. And some of them, they just scoff at it. Or they are diehard natural, kind of like our previous guests were really to one extreme of one of you. Some people are that way with natural treatments. And they'd rather die of a cancer rather than treat it with any drugs or surgery. I just so. read about a woman. Uh, and I don't mean to cut you off, but this is kind of the same thing. I just sure. read about a woman who was in a group. There are groups and pods of these women around the country that have their breasts removed. Mm-hmm. Thi- just because they think... They are going to get breast cancer because it's hereditary in their in their lineage. So they go and have them removed so they don't have to worry about that. Is that crazy? That's crazy. That oh, I agree. To me. You agree. Okay, now my next question that I've had people ask me, um, or I, as over right. the years. Yeah, I'm all right. I'm gonna, <laughs> yes, this, this is this now. You will not embarrass you. This has been one of my most uncomfortable shows, yes, but I'm doing fine. <laughs> With all you've been through. All right. Can I this get you a cold towel you. for your forehead, Mark? You won't need to call. This is not an embarrassing question. Um, I have had um, people I've known over the years who swear that their prostate is healthy because they've taken certain nutritional s- supplements. Oh. Is pumpkin seed one? I can't remember because it was a long time ago, but I've had a lot of them swear by, and, and you can go to any health food store and look up a supplement that is supposed to help strengthen the prostate. Mm-hmm. So do you have an opinion on any of that? Let's get him back on. Yeah. The uh, Oh, no, don't put me back on. I'm not, I'm I have a face for radio, and so. <laughs> but uh, well, I can give you some basics uh, that might help. Um, actually, that just went off. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I was around with power, so that's fine. Um, so um, the pumpkin seed is kind of the old standby. It's one. The research hasn't really shown it being you know some super food. We think it has lignans in there and a little bit of omega three and a few things. So it might have something in there. Uh, if you're asking what other natural treatments, some basic things just for keep healthy, uh, one is uh, tomatoes. Uh, tomatoes you might hear about because it has an enzyme right. called lycopene. And lycopene is found in tomatoes. Dry- actually, it's one of the few times that stewed tomatoes, processed tomatoes, are actually better. We're not talking ketchup here, but, you know, processed tomatoes slightly are better than fresh tomatoes. But still, strawberries, 
and um, uh, tomatoes are high in lycopene. And that actually goes in and it blocks an, a, an enzyme called insulin growth factor 1 alpha. <laughs> and anyway, what that does is it speeds up the metabolism, speeds up the metabolism. And like I said, anytime you speed up the metabolism of a cell, it has a greater chance to trip over itself, flip an oncogene, and you have cancer. So that's why lycopene is a way to block that. And here's a kicker, is that lycopene, when you eat it, gets very well absorbed when it's chased with omega-3 fatty acids. And omega-3 fatty acids, what's that? What does it bind to? Red it? meat. Not what red is it? Meat. Are, you, are you paying attention to this show? <laughs> red not, meat. Not red, red meat. Red meat's, the la- red meat's been proven to actually increase prostate cancer. So that's another area. So what does it bind, that's it? Good does to, it bind know. to the omega three? Yeah. No. Um, well, what red meat? No. 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 So, so omega three. So right. omega threes bond with lycopenes and help them get absorbed into uh, your intestines. Okay. And guess where? What, one of the most famous omega threes is olive oil. So when you start thinking about it, and I'm not trying to be too funny, is think of Italians. I mean, you've oh. got tomato sauce and you have you know omega threes, you know, just, uh, olive oil. And I'd like to see a study if Italians actually have lower incidence. Now, certain people have higher incidence. Uh, black men, right off the bat, have a higher risk of prostate cancer. A lot of guys know that. But also, white guys who come, a lot of people don't, haven't heard this, um, coming from Teutonic realms. So Germany, Scandinavia, uh, those guys have almost the same You're risk doomed. as black men. And almost all of my guys coming in, I mean, 80% of them are German, Scandinavian, Viking blood. I'm like, oh boy, we're going to be friends <laughs> every time they come in. And uh, now here's the kicker, though. If you're black and you stay in Africa, they don't have a problem. If you're Teutonic and you stay north, not a problem. It's when they move from where they evolved from, then you start having an issue. And the question, then we start considering this, that why? It's perhaps, what's the difference? It's the darkest of us and the palest of us that have this problem when they move from their area of where they evolved from the sun. And guess what is made in the sun uh, is vitamin D. Vitamin D is regulated by how much melanin you have in the sun. So vitamin D directly links to prostate cancer. Black so it, Vikings are in trouble, <laughs> <laughs> especially the ones that came to the U.S. <laughs> so, vi- so, so taking vitamin D supplements is probably not a bad idea. Or no, and actually age. most people are low in vitamin D, especially you, you guys probably know this, that, that uh, Arizona is the second lowest vitamin I did D. I not know that. Because we With stay all the inside. Sun. Exactly. We, we hide from the because sun. Because of yeah. the skin cancer. Yeah. I want, on the Scandinavian side, though, wouldn't that be because they're eating so much more fish? Because well, they eat more fish. That's no, well, yeah, you can. If you're leaving, if yeah. you're in, if you're in those northern countries and you leave that to come here, you're not getting nearly as much fish, and you're getting. Aren't you getting more sun than you would in Scandinavia? Well, I'm, I'm having trouble with the link there. Why the moving would make a difference? Well, we're not sure exactly why. It just seems to be that they're both. We literally know it's the palest. Uh, and by the way, Scottish Irish people somewhat too. They always have these real pale skin. I see. They're like my second highest. I tend to see. Um, but uh, some of it's probably lifestyle too. But then again, the Japanese. You know, they have. They have a really good lifestyle, and then they come here and live in America. They have a bad one, but they don't start developing prostate cancer, mm-hmm. and they have oh, a different skin. So it's more than the lifestyle. There's something about the skin and when they move. And also when I teach my class, I tell them, uh, plus I'm one of the most politically incorrect doctors, but I tell them, I don't want to hear the word African-American in this class. I said, your physicians, not politicians. I said, the word's black unless, because, you, you know, after all, we black Europeans, the same thing. So you have right. to be clear with that. Unless you're talking African-American in the sense of you know, African American men have more prostate cancer because of fewer screenings because of the medical system here in this country. Then you can make that link. So I just try to Very throw good. that out there of how I deal with that. It, right, because you're really going after of sk- pigmentation, not partic- not necessarily the country a person came from. It's exactly. In, in this case, well, it, it might be something genetic too, maybe from the from the races. I, I we don't mm-hmm. know. I'm just saying this is this is an area where we all know black men have had a higher risk. Um, and some of it also was high because, honestly, they had lower, less access to health care. So they weren't screened as much, and they died more, unfortunately. But now we're finding it with Scandinavian men, like I said, Teuton. Interestingly mm-hmm. enough, the hour is gone. <laughs> you always watch the clock. That's we're my all job. into this conversation, oh. and you just rain on our parade. You don't all get up <laughs> at 4.40 in the morning to go teach seminary either. So um, I still have an uh, uh, Old Testament Bible lesson to prepare. Tomorrow, well, so well, maybe for tomorrow. it'll help lift you. Um, no, I'm lifted. This was very educational. I must say it is information that, that, that is important to have. I'm going to ask one last question. It ties into the whole olive oil, tomatoes, because don't they use a lot of flaxseed there, too, and a lot of artichokes? Would that very good. In? Matter of fact, flaxseeds and flaxseed oil is one of the best 
prostate cancer treatments as well. And that's natural. They have very mm-hmm. high lignans. If you grind them up fresh and eat right. them, eat them right away. Excellent. Yeah, that's, I didn't, that's what I, I didn't thought. even make that connection. I just learned something today. Well, I have a see, question, and you go along with her. Uh, I've done a lot of studying in algae, and algae is a great producer of omega three fatty acids. Mm-hmm. Doesn't matter if it's coming from flaxseed, fish. Meat, Repeat the question. Yeah. Well, if, okay, if the question is omega threes for lycopene, any omega three would work. However, and I want to get to, I know the hour's up here, so, but omega-3s are also used as an anti-cancer and anti-prostate cancer. In that case, the two best are flax oil, which flax seed, that oil, which actually goes right to the prostate, and omega-3s from fish oil is the best for systemic health and systemic cancer. So there are some specific types, but in general, uh, those two are the best, but omega-3s in general are good for lycopene, so... I'm sorry. Well, thank you. And we appreciate Mark co-hosting this show today. And for those of you that have ever, ever not liked any comment he said, you can be really happy today because he's very uncomfortable. <laughs> and we didn't talk <laughs> about money either. I felt bad. We didn't, you know, I didn't you bring know, money to somehow. Me, health, you know, part of money and motivation, if you're healthy and you're, it's a waste of money to get an incorrect diagnosis. And it's a waste of time, and it's just a waste of resources. And we all, if we haven't been through it, know people who have been through it. And I am a real fan of prevention, as you can see. Uh, so I think it was mm-hmm. great, and it was so spontaneous. I really appreciate you being willing to stay. Oh, thanks. I really, really do. It was, I learned a lot. I really learned a lot. And Mark learned a lot. Joe, did and you Mark, learn? I learned an enormous amount. Very Even good. things that I'm going to work on tonight. <laughs> Do- Doctor, <laughs> holy moly. Dr. Frank Tambori. Um, <laughs> Money and motivation. I we presume, appreciate you coming. I presume that somebody who wanted to have theirs checked, they don't have to go through another doctor. They can call you direct and say, mm-hmm. I'm curious to have the machine. Uh, who, how do they get a hold of you? Just Well, you can just Google my name. It comes up everywhere. Uh, the phone number for my Phoenix office, I have different branches, but it's, a, it's 602 Four nine three two two seven three, uh, or the w- the website for that one is dub 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 um, four we care the number four we care dot com, okay. and I'm one of the physicians on staff there. Four we care. All right, thank you thank again. You. Thank you for joining us, and thanks for joining us. We All will right. see you next Tuesday. God bless. Are you experiencing computer problems? Is your computer running slow, bogged down with viruses and spyware? You need a reliable and knowledgeable, trustworthy computer service company. Contact Computers, Networks, and More, located in Santan Valley. Get your computer or laptop running in top condition by a certified technician with 20-plus years' experience and beta tester from Microsoft. Computers, Networks, and More provides repairs and solutions to any computer-related issue, whether it's software, installation, troubleshooting, updates, or